So, first of all, uh, Louis is fine, fine. And second, I think I have a new favorite vampire. If you guys are new here, my name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And we are back to talk Interview with a Vampire, Season 2, Episode 2, Do You Know What It Means to Be Loved by Death? Honey, and this episode continues to give me everything I need. When I tell you they are not pulling any punches, they are coming through with not only the drama, not only the cinematography and wardrobe, they are just giving the performances of their lives. lives. Like Interview Interview with the Vampire doesn't win awards for this season. I don't know. Something's wrong. In the world. Let's get right into this episode. And again, as always, this is spoilers filled. Why? Because spoilers are what I do every single time. And so as the episode opens up, we hear again, Louis on a (laughs) lock, but really he's having a conversation with Daniel and Armand while Daniel and Armand are arguing as usual. But basically it's he and Claudia entering into Paris and he's like, you know, a post war post Nazi Paris, right? Is healing just like they were. Um, and he okay. says that when he thinks back about this time of he and Claudia in Paris, it actually elicits good memories, right? Which no, you it's know. a thing. And then immediately Daniel and Armand arguing about Paris because Daniel feels like Paris is the worst place because, you know, uh, he and his, you know, Alice aren't together anymore. It was bad. You know, it was, they just want to fight. Claudia, we go back in time. Claudia says, you says, know, we've got twice as many pockets just to make it here. But Louis just says that he is, Louis says he is grateful just knowing that nobody wanted to lynch him. Listen, he said Paris as it relates or versus America He'd rather be in Paris. And, you and, know, Malloy, you know, Malloy comes back come. with, oh, there wasn't racism in 1940s Paris. And Louis ain't say that. Omar said, he ain't say that. Malloy's like, are y'all going to finish each other's sentences this whole time? And they're like, maybe. We've been together 77 years. Armand says, 47 more than Lestat. And I'm like, Armand, are you jealous? Are you jealous of what Louis and Armand had? It was giving jealousy. Right. And so we find out that when they get to Paris, they check in with no one because they don't know the rules. But the rules are that when a vampire comes into town, a new one, they are supposed to check in with the local coven. Right. And Uh, they were just supposed to make themselves known, find out the the rules rules or how the coven operates in the city. But they don't. But the coven knows that they're there. Right. Because they can hear and they can see. Uh, And so basically they say, Armand says that their coven was cleaning up for them for what they were there five months before anyone ever approached and they were just cleaning up the messes, right? And so Uh, uh, we find out that the theater de Vampire was just a couple of moments away from the hotel that he and Claudia were living at. (laughs) And so uh, basically... He and Claudia are experiencing Paris for the first time. Uh, Louis picks up photography and Claudia is just, again, trying to find her way, but she's very depressed. We find out that she lets Louis know, what would you do without me? I think they're at a cafe one night. He's taking his pictures and she's like, what would you do without me? Without me? Who would you be? And this definitely gave me a, a foreshadowing, right, of events to come with Claudia uh, because, uh, because it was deep. I don't think it was just about her wanting to pursue a life on her own. I really do think she might have this inner knowing of what is going to potentially happen to her. Louise said, just let a brother prep here. You're, we're just chilling again. The comic relief that we need uh, in this series, we get it everywhere and i absolutely love that but again louis is not really taking it seriously he's like i really want you to be thinking about that louis who are you without me who are you without lestat that's something important that she needs to know that they need to work through uh Malloy uh, and Malloy- armand just continue continue to argue it's just how it got tiring honestly throughout the episode guys we can't be going back and forth forever Uh, It made it interesting. So Claudia wants fulfillment. She's depressed. She's walking down the lane and sees this dress shop. And so as she's walking, the shopkeeper from across the street said, no, sis, don't go in there. (laughs) She's a a Nazi, basically. But she doesn't care because Claudia wants the dress, right? And the dressmaker comes out just as nasty and rude as she wants to be. Claudia said, here's the money. Take the dress in. Make it enough. And so she does. Back in real time, honey, Daniel's still messing with the real Rasheed. 
All right, the real Rashid. Louis finds himself a boy park because apparently he still got needs and war torn Romania, Russia wasn't giving what he needed. And so honey, he didn't found the park, which is the spot. All right. And he's kind of just taking in the sights, honey, taking in the boys. Uh, and we see Armand slowly approach because he had to meet him and educate him. He says when he met Louis, he was alarmingly handsome. And the first words that Armand said to him was, I will not harm you and bring the petite beauty. You are most welcome here. And Louis says, and he never did harm me. But again, with these memory blocks, I, I think, I think I, our I mom think did hurt him. Maybe not in a conventional way, but he hurt Louis. This whole interaction, the whole love between Armand and Louis, they are selling it. Do you hear me? Because I believed it. I believe that it was real. And so they're invited to the theater day van okay. here okay. and they are ready for the show. And it's like nothing they've ever seen. Claudia is in awe. The show is wild and she loves every single second of it. When I tell you the, the, the liveliness and glee in her eyes that she is watching them perform, it, it was giving your acting. You know what I mean? It, it gave Claudia was doing, was doing her big one. Right. And this is where we meet Santiago, who is the master of ceremonies, honey, the lead actor uh, who is giving the performance of a lifetime. And again, instantly you are enamored of Santiago. You want to know about San Santiago. You want to know where he came, who his people are because he's so chilling and comical and all of these things all at once. And the crowd is eating out of the palm of his hands. And so they go through this whole set or you know, acts of the play. And really it's making the audience, you know, you just know, think that this is a game, right? They're fake. These are not real vampires. But in that last scene, honey, they bring a woman out there who's screaming and hollering, trying to tell the people, listen, these are real vampires. They are really going to take me. They are really going to get me. And the crowd, they're in disbelief. This is part of the show, right? Because we've, we faked it up to this point, right? And so this is where the title comes from for the episode. Do you know what it means to be loved by death? And in it, we see Santiago lull this woman into death, honey, takes the bite, and the rest feed on her in front of everybody. And while some are taken aback, most, no one says a thing. And when Santiago comes down, honey, off that stage and talks to that big man and says, turn to your neighbor and say, when I tell you I almost fell out, he said, yeah, people will betray you every single time. And so even in the act, you can tell he has a loathing for humanity. So I am so curious to know who Santiago is. And I think that um, is what's so important uh, and what's most meaningful in a compelling story is that it creates this sense of urgency to understand and know a character more. And that is what Interview with a Vampire is doing so incredibly well. Again, the way Claudia is smiling during this whole thing is sending me. Louis is disgusted, right? Because he he's still... He still got his humanity intact. I don't know if Claudia ever really had a chance to have humanity, you know? So she fits right in. She loves it. And they meet the other vampires. Claudia, again, is just loving that she now has community. There are people like her, right? But what she does, she just straight up lies. Who's your maker? And they lie badly. Then they see a picture of Lestat on the wall. And what do they do again? Lie badly lie very 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 badly honey daniel we go back present day and daniel's like this is a, a telenovela he put on the music he said oh, it wasn't all sweet like this it wasn't all sweet like this so now we go back and with the emergence of of the lestat picture and knowing this is where he hailed from louis i gotta figure this out because i'm not really equipped for this if we want to live this is not going to be the vibe. So he goes to the bank of Rogue, whatever. This is where apparently uh, Lestat got his monthly wires for their lifestyle. And so the man there, like, I know exactly who you are. Hold on. Here's the box. I'm assuming he's he's not around anymore or he's asleep, which let us know that the banker knew everything. Uh, and so okay. Louis gets in there and he is reading the letter from Lestat. And I said, Lestat even manipulating when he's not there. And Louis... 
And basically the thoughts like give yourself, forgive the per don't worry about them, let this fester in their minds. Because we know Lestat is all about revenge, but it's got to be dramatic. It's got to be dramatic, whatever he does. So now present day, because you know, Lloyd's still messing with him, still being mean, honey, they both get in his head at the same time. And I want to know what really happened with Alice, because while Louis was in his head about Alice, right, in Daniel's head, Armand jumps in there too and talk, starts talking about some playboys from when he was a kid. And I'm like, Armand, what are you up to? Armand and Louis are both withholding. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's go back. And so now they're with their coven and they feed at night. They feed after the show. And so Claudia Louie go on this little ride along, honey. Armand takes them to this big mansion, honey. And they have a feeding frenzy. And while they're going ham up there, Armand and Louie, honey, are having their own little love story outside. Getting to know each other. Armand doesn't eat. And you know, Louis said, I ate before this. And he said, you withhold. I like that. And my question was, do the ancients need to feed less? I think they mentioned that. Somebody drop it in the comments below. And he gives Louis a warning. He says, listen, Louis, Claudia is great at blocking her mind and her thoughts. You're not so much. So before you get into a conversation about Lestat with anybody in there and you tell me on your own time what happened, you don't need to tell me everything right now. But as far as them, they don't like being lied to and they don't forgive. So figure it out. And as a matter of fact, it don't go back to that bank again. Armand knew and knows. And I think he immediately fell in love with Louis. I think it was one of those love at first sight things for both of them. But honey, we will see. Again, y'all know we will be back uh, from the fifth, the fifth wall and Tyra over at Struggle Reviews TV Tuesday night. Same place, same time. You will get our live review, review of Interview of with the Vampire Season 2, Episode 2. But if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Bye.